All data engineers need to be able to work with YAML. Many important tools like DBT, Ansible, Docker, all rely really heavily on this particular file type. By definition, YAML is a data serialization language, and it's designed to be both human readable and computationally powerful. It was created in 2001, and it stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language, which also happens to make it what's known as a recursive acronym. Fun fact. YAML is commonly used for configuration files and typically seen as a cleaner alternative to the other traditional options like JSON or XML. And just like JSON or XML, YAML focuses on the basic concept of keys and values, but the difference is how it's actually presented. Rather than using brackets, quotations, or other explicit syntax, YAML relies on spacing and indentation. This approach gives a cleaner overall feel and more consistency with how the files will be designed. And finally, YAML supports two different ways to refer to this file type. You could do a .yaml or .yml. And to show this, let's now go through an example, build out our own YAML file from scratch and see what this looks like. So if we remember, YAML is really a bunch of keys and values. So we'll start off with our first key, which is team, which is going to be followed by a colon. Next comes the value and depending on the data type will dictate how you write this. In our case, the first value will be a string. Let's take a look at strings and the team name is 76ers. So I'll just type that in there. And a couple notes about strings. By default, if you start typing it out and it's truly a string, it will recognize it that way. And you don't actually need to put any quotations around it, it'll just assume that it's a string. However, if you want, you can do uh, double quotes, that's acceptable, as well as single quotes. I'll go ahead and add one more string key and value here. Next, let's take a look at integer. So what we will do here is add a new key, I'll call this year founded. And in this case, like we said, it's an integer, so I'll start typing it in, 1946. As we can see, it will recognize it as an integer, it's not a string because of the characters that we put in here. If we did have a floating point or a decimal, the same applies here as well. It can recognize it that way. Okay, moving along, let's go to the next data type, which is Boolean. And what we'll call this here is is current champion. That'll be the name of the attribute, the key here. And while I would love to put this as true, unfortunately, this is false. They are not the current champion. And the other options with YAML for this same Boolean of, of true false, you could put yes or no, as well as on or off. All of them are synonymous here. You could use any of these to get what you want. So we'll just keep this as a traditional true false and I'll leave it as false. Next, let's take a look at multi-line strings. This is something that you'll often run into. We'll call this background. And let's say we have this, right? So you might typically see this on, on one line. Maybe this is how we want it to be presented as one line. But when we're working in this file, that's really long and it's not really what we would like to see. It's just, you know, a little too much. So one of the great aspects of YAML is working with these multi-line strings. So in this case, what we want is for this to be broken up to be a little cleaner to read. And what we will do is put the greater than sign right here. And by doing that, if we press enter and move in two spaces again, remember all of this is based on indentation. What we can do is break this up however we want. So let's say we wanna put these on different lines around here. And what this will do with this indicator is treat every new line essentially as a white space. So we'll see this new line that we put here, we press enter, but when it compiles and actually builds it out for you, it's gonna look like that. So a good example of this outside of, let's say a description could be a really long command that you need to run. And instead of having it all in one line, break it up into different lines, but when it compiles and reads it, it will put it all back to one. Now the other option for multi-line strings, let's say you didn't want them to be on one line and you truly wanted it to be on new lines. Let's add a new option here, organization history. And so the other option we have here is instead of the greater than sign is to add a pipe. And by doing a pipe, it's going to maintain your new lines. So let's say we add this in here. And in this case, because we've used the pipe, instead of it bringing it and removing the white space like this, it's going to treat these new lines as truly new lines. So it will display it exactly like this. And again, think of an example with code. If you have multiple lines of code that you want separately, but you want it to show in one, one place, you could do it like this and it would run them individually. All right, so moving along, let's now take a look at a list. 
And what I'll do here is add a list of famous players. And so to create a list structure, we'll press enter, space in, and add a dash. And this is one of two ways we can do this. We'll show the second in a minute. But let's say famous players, we'll start with the most recent player, and we'll say Joel Embiid, enter, add another dash. And what this is doing now, it will treat each of these as a list, and it will create a list object for, in this case, famous players. And like we said, there is two, there are two options for lists. So the other is to wrap these in brackets, square brackets like this instead of the dashes. And then you would just put those in here, but separated by commas instead of using the dashes this way. It's a matter of personal preference. I personally think the dashes are more readable, but that's totally up to you to, to decide. The next one we'll look at here is a dictionary or creating an object within here. You know, maybe it's not a list, but it's actually an object. We'll add another attribute here called management staff. And this will be, again, very similar to a list. We'll press enter, tab in, and I'll add a couple attributes here. And the difference here, as you can see, compared to a list is there is no dashes. It's just next line tabbed in. And remember, YAML is all about spacing and indentation. So unlike a list where you have the ability to iterate, in this case, you have just a single object called management staff with three uh, of these attributes here. Another feature of YAML is to combine some of these concepts and make even more uh, complex data types within it. So let's say we have a, in this case, a list of players, but let's say we want to make this a list of objects. You could absolutely do that. It's still a list, but this list is now an object. And if we're going to do it this way, you need to add the specific keys and indicate the value. So we'll go ahead and do this for the others. And now we can see we have a little more of a complex data type of a list of objects, and you could just continue to indent in and get as complicated as you need to. The last thing we'll touch on here is comments. And the way that you do that is through the pound sign. So pound, this is a comment and it would treat it like that. So we could go ahead and comment this out. Maybe we don't want that. And now we can say we're all set with this YAML file. It's built out. And as we look at this again, we can see aside from maybe some of these things here, it's all spacing and indentation. As we mentioned, this is typically used as a substitute in place of XML or JSON. So let's see what this would look like in those other data types. Before we do that, let's just confirm uh, that this is valid syntax, it's, it's valid. This is a site that will check it for you. And so here's a site that will convert YAML to XML. If we drop this in here, uh, we can see what this looks like. And if we open up a new tab here, here's what this same file looks like in XML. You can decide if this is something you prefer or not. Here are the keys and values. It's a little bit different. Take a look at the string and here's the object. Now let's do the same for YAML to JSON. This is what it would look like in JSON. And here we can see the new lines in place for this, whereas YAML just removes it out and interprets it through this. So again, a different approach for creating this type of configuration file with this type of information. And it's just more of a matter of preference of how you want to present it. All right, so now that we understand the purpose of YAML, we have the foundations for building our own files. Let's check out some real world examples of this in the wild and, and what this actually looks like. Here's example number one. We have a dbt file, dbtproject.yaml. And here now, if we look at this YAML file, we can see how it's built. We have a string, here's an integer, here's a list, and they have their resource paths essentially as a dictionary. It's a little bit different in this scenario, but you can kind of get the idea. Next, here's an example of a docker compose file, docker compose.yaml. And again, now that we understand how YAML is built, we can see the different data types here. Version, here's a, what looks like a dictionary. But here's an environment uh, object here. They're bringing in some variables, but if you break it down to the basics of the different data types and uh, the foundations that we just talked about, you can now work with and understand pretty much any of these files. We'll look at one more, and this is a GitHub action workflow, and a lot of workflows now are built with YAML. So again, we have name and the different objects here. If we were to copy this and we wanted to see it in JSON, we could see it. It's the same, same concept, just a different way of displaying it. So as you can now see, YAML is a really important language to understand as a data engineer because it's going to be one that you work with quite often.
So I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.